So welcome from uh, the UK Space Agency. We're really excited to have so many of you here, and I was heard it was uh, three times as many could have been could have been here, which is just fantastic. Um, I'll just very briefly go through a little bit about what the UK Space Agency is, um, and just just why we're excited about the new generation of um, and skilling people up to use the Earth observations that we're paying for. So what is uh, can't even. Right. So this UK Space Agency, so we're an executive agency of, um, it's now changed to the Department of Energy and Industrial Strategy, <coughs> but um, we're all about growth, which you'll hear quite a lot about. Um, so we have a direct line to ministers, but we're civil servants, so we, it's, uh, we channel the money through, basically. So we're responsible for the strategic leadership, the policy, the regulation and programme delivery um, for our whole space industry. So that's space science, the manufacture, and... Um, as, as well as all the downstream, and we work um, in our sector. It's about 11.8 billion. It's quite a quite a large area, growing rapidly. It, it's bucked the trend, uh, the economic trends. Um, so we work very closely with industry and academia, and it's great to, to it really is great to be here today. Um, and internationally, we work a lot with international partners, a lot with ESA, obviously. And our ambition as a government is to capture 10% of the global space market by 2030. So it's a, it's a, um, it's a joint plan with industry um, to go out there and, and be world leaders in space, everything that space provides. But underpinning that, what we're trying to do is have a stable regulatory environment so that investment can be made, so people can invest inwardly and um, uh, do export deals for the UK. And this, this year is critical where our whole focus, well, a huge focus is on December, um, where, as you know, people sign up to um, ESA programmes on a four-yearly basis. And it, this, this round is very much about Earth observation. So it's a, it's a big round of negotiations of what we will spend our money on. Will we get the money? Will we, can, we, can we spend it? Um, we're, so we're looking to protect that sort of spend for the science, for the innovation projects. Um, and so we're currently in the midst of business cases of why is all this important? And it's, it's great for me to be here today to just click in that it's really important for so many different reasons. Um, and that there is a whole ecosystem of people that are um, involved in Earth observation. So as we're driven by, this is, this is um, quite old now, and we're refreshing it, but we're driven by growth. Um, this plan, sorry, it doesn't click. There we go. <laughs> um, the the growth that we that we're predicting to see is you can see some of it, one billion to three billion. That's not insignificant in the manufacture and instrumentation, but a vast majority of growth between 2010 and 2030 will be from services and applications, and actually, a huge proportion of that, so 80% of that growth is coming from Earth observation applications and services. So the use of the information is just vital. It's absolutely vital for science and society and economic growth. Um, so that's why it's, 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 it's brilliant that there's so many people here today can get their hands on the data, get to understand it, and, and start using it in different ways. And clearly, so data is the, is, is, is the key. I mean, I've been using this for a while, so it's out of date now, 2013. But with Copernicus and everything else, it's gone from a little bit a day, and actually we're now going to be having eight ter terabytes, is that eight hard drives worth of, eight it's machines six worth? Terabytes, yeah. it's, it's six already, yeah, it's exactly. Um, and, and all of that free, so actually the problem becomes not access to data, but having too much of it and filtering through it. And um, So a big part of what we're doing um, in the UK is trying to trying to see our way through that, what, what infrastructure do we need, what, what back-end tools do we need, in the light of what's going on in, um, in Europe, in, um, in CEOS, in everything else. And, and so, you know, some of the, some people think of the really boring stuff to the, to the front-end portal so that everybody can use it, the people can use it. Um, and we're just trying to um, work through what that vision for the UK actually means, but that's, that's quite a big, <coughs> big task. Um, where are these common services, you know, single sign-ons, all those sorts of things. Working very closely with ESA on that. Well, it's not all about data. So this, this slide, I took up this post just over a year ago, and um, this um, spectrum, essentially, of, of the space industry, space infrastructure, 
didn't have the arrow along the bottom. And that was kind of a, a turning point, really, in the, in the philosophy of the space agency, of just putting that arrow on. It sounds quite simple, but actually there was a huge backlash because it's not just about doing research for research's sake or boys with toys and launching things. It's all about, um, and, you know, they're, they're big industries in their own right, all these areas. But it's, it's the why we're doing it, it's the information and services. And it's connecting back, why, what do people want the data for to actually drive that loop? It's actually a user-driven system, albeit it might be a 15-year loop uh, or, or longer, but actually that's what we want. So um, it's, it's, its use for science and society is driving the innovation and, and the tool development, etc. Um, so that, that's where we're at. We, and, and we as the space agency sit at, at have to try and balance our investments across that whole spectrum, um, where we're going as a nation across those whole things. Um, where are our strengths? We build. Um, one of the things I didn't know, my first week in post, I went to a very small industrial estate. You wouldn't know anything from the outside. I didn't realise that 98% of the, the moving bits on satellites are actually made there in the UK. You know, I just I had no idea that, of, of that, the, the breadth of the skills that we've got. Um, to, to anything from those very small switches to whole um, prime, um, putting the whole, whole stuff together. We've just renewed, actually, it's in the press today, we've just renewed the management contract for our Centre for Earth Observation and Instrumentation. Um, it's just a <coughs> flavour of some of the... Um, it's, it's seed money. It's, it's a £2 million pot of, of grants per year um, to try and stimulate that seed money, and industry are very much in partnership with that. Um, and we're continuing with that for the next five years to, tr to really uh, position ourselves to, to still be at the heart of Earth observation instrumentation. Um, so I've talked a bit about the data. Ha data. Um, we, we are a uh, strong player in data handling, but also in the calibration validation side of things. We have very big strengths with our National Physics Laboratory and RAL Space um, and many others. I think we were instrumental in the QA4EO part, and it's very much a, a core part of what we're renowned for scientifically, um, internationally. Um, and, and then applications. I've talked about how that's how we see the whole chain and applications being the part. This, it doesn't look like much. It looks like people sitting around a desk. That was actually quite a key picture, because that was where... Um, so we have a Space for Smarter Government program. So it's about getting government, the public sector, to actually use Earth observation in the daily life. So that was, they were using it in earnest. Uh, that was a, um, our COBRA uh, emergency response, basically, the minister's emergency response meeting for flooding, um, when there was a, was a load of flooding, and they had the images on their desks in that same day, and that was a huge turning point um, of actually, well, this is, can be useful now on, uh, in, in real time. Um, and actually changes the teams on the ground, their response to, to that emergency. So, um, and then everything obviously from farming and um, land applications. So what, what's our priority is picking through all that. We have to be really, really careful. Uh, and the agency is, is, is pretty small. Of what, what do we do? Where do we put our effort? I kind of see this as uh, a little person we had a little team in the middle, the heart of things, trying to pull things together. There's a vast, vast, very learned, very brilliant community um, of, um, well, you guys is, is one. And going to things like Living Planet, you just really realise how strong that community is. They're the sort of the legs. <laughs> and our job is to, is to have a little bit of the strategic thinking of where is, <coughs> where is it going, um, and the policy actions. And then the two arms is really we're pointing to growth uh, and economic growth and use of EO. Some of those are intertwined. Obviously, you can use it for economic growth, but some of it's growth. So our, our actions are in those sort of four areas, defining and leading the, the strategic direction, policy development, enabling growth, uh, positioning us as a global leader in the use of Earth observation and applications and services, and being a bit of a sector sponsor, um, if, if needed, nationally and internationally. So that's, this is a, a space agency slide of what the space agency does and works in these sorts of areas. And I've just overlaid, so 
it's 70 staff, we're probably we're about 100 now, um, with a remit of 360 million. But actually, the EO team, <laughs> we spend a third of the money and we've got three people. But <laughs> we're a little, you can see we're a little stretched. I'm hoping to have another one soon. Um, but still, we, that's why we have to be very careful where we put our time and effort. And we rely very, very heavily on the, the input of others. Policy and regulation, we, so um, DEFRA, our Department of Environment, are the lead on Copernicus policy, but we advise on all the space aspects, which is 90% of it. Um, again, with GEO, the Group on Earth Observation, DEFRA are the lead, and we advise on the space. CEOS, we lead, UMETSAT, Met Office lead, and we advise, and ESA is, is our lead. Um, training is a, is a big um, part of what we do. We really can't get to the growth that we need. It's we're talking about 100,000 new jobs in the space industry by 2030. We can't get there without training people and skilling people up. Um, and people are, there's been a lot of work with obviously the Tim Peak, the Tim Peak effect, we're calling it, and, and on that from schools. And I think that we're going to be doing a lot more on the um, graduate training and postgraduate training because it's now that we need the skills, not, not from seven year olds. We have, can't wait that long. <laughs> I mean, we need them as well, but we, we need to start. Um, there's obviously loads of programs we're involved with internationally with the SWAT, with Kness and, and NASA, um, and some of the others, and CCI is a very critical one. Um, these are, I'm very aware these are all acronyms. This is just a, a tool to show some of this. So CDSSG is a program about positioning the UK for climate services, um, climate services data from Space Coordination Group, something like that it is. Um, and it's all about having the end-to-end -end infrastructure. So it's all very well having the science, but can you turn the handle operationally to get a business out of it, to give the information as and when businesses need that? So it's having that, that whole pull through. Um, we're investing in small things and big things, big, big ideas through COI and others. Video from space we see as one of the game changers um, coming shortly. We talked about the growth um, and the business sector. We work very closely with them, and we 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 work very much in partnership. But as I say, we're a small agency. We're sort of the um, conveners and the, the heart of it. But we rely on very much. We've got a very strong cross-government group now on Earth observation. Um, the chief scientist of Defra is now chairing that, um, and they're looking at what can be done, the data part, and everything else. So that's that's really positive. And obviously, we work. I've said numerous times who we work with. So we work nationally. I've talked about SSGP, the Space of Smarter Government Programme, and the EOWG is the Earth Observation Working Group, the cross-government. That's, so that's permanent sex level. So that's the number one in each government department grouping. So it's a very senior grouping. Um, then we work at European level, and we have international space programmes now, and we play into um, those <coughs> things too. Big pot of money in the international partnership fund. Let's do. Suddenly stopped again. Okay, and I didn't know whether to put this in or not. It's the big elephant in the room. Um, the message is we are open for business. It is. Um, we have had an, a very historic referendum. We are in historic times. We don't know what will happen, but in the meantime, we are a full member of the Commission still. And until the process is concluded, not when it starts, when it's concluded, there's no legal change in status. Um, so we are still members of the EU space programmes. There's no immediate effect. The government policy is to leave, but we're still working out what that is. Um, UK can still apply for and be in all the Horizon 2020, Galileo, Copernicus and other contracts in all the usual ways. And there's been some reassurances from government that they will, on the Horizon 2020 side, um, that they were on a contracts if it goes beyond the time when, if and when we do leave. Um, very much that um, other nationals are welcome to live and work in the UK. Nothing has changed on, on that regard. And as, as a space industry, we're really reliant on highly skilled people that we know we, we haven't got all of them in the UK. And we're very much um, making, that, making that point. And well, critically, <coughs> ESA is not part of the, of the EU. So our membership doesn't change in any way. Um, and in, in fact, we're, it, that might, um, this December will be, be critical in that, <laughs> in that 
process. So that's, that's all from me, really, which is to say that Earth observation, we see it as an absolutely essential part of our critical infrastructure. And it's, it's becoming that, the mindset is becoming that space is now part of national infrastructure. It's not just a nice to do or a boy's toys. Um, it contributes to economic growth, data and science, etc. Where we see success from the agency, it's about growing our existing UK strengths. And obviously, the school here is, is, is one of those. Seizing new markets, being in innovative, um, and engaging the public sector as well as, as the private sector as operational users. Um, we're very much on the cusp of technology and business models changing, I think. We're very much on Earth observation going from being a very techy, um, very high expensive thing to something that people use every day. A bit like the, the social shift we've seen people using Google, Google Maps. We're, 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 on the, we're on the verge of that social revolution, really. And I think skills development then is absolutely critical to deliver that operational services and realise the benefits of, of the Earth observation that we put so much money into at the top end. We want to get it used and used for society. So just that's contact details. If you've got any questions, please just email me or get in touch. We're not ogres of civil service, just to <laughs> come and say hello. Um, I won't be around, but please drop me an email um, or get in touch with Anna and she can field it or whatever. And Please enjoy the course. Thank you.